Okay, welcome back in episode two. Um, our code looks like this. In this episode, we're gonna add, um, well, we're gonna f uh, draw something just to check everything works. Oh, and you see, <laughs> I forgot to turn off autopilot. Well, that's easy. There we go. Um, yeah, we're gonna draw something on the canvas just to make sure um, that it works. And then we're gonna um, actually uh, create our main loop, our game loop. Uh, game loop. <clears throat> we're gonna add a function called update simulation where we're gonna run our engine in. And we're gonna um, calculate our first thing and that's the delta time. Delta time is basically the time between one frame and the next frame. And we need this delta time to update our simulation, to add movement to it. So, all right, then uh, let's start first with getting our canvas, because we need somehow, uh, we need something, you know, to paint in. Um, that's, yeah, it's quite easy. We just call var canvas and then we say document, document, get element by ID. There you go. And here you need the ID of your canvas. Or in my case, it's my canvas. If you do call it canvas, well, it's canvas. <laughs> so let's add my canvas. And then we need to get the context of the canvas. And that's also pretty easy. We just we just gonna call canvas um, get context. And we need here a 2D inside because we want to have the 2D context. And that's it basically. And now we are gonna check if that works. Uh, if that works. For this, we're gonna draw a simple rectangle, a a red one. This is, well, it's a bit com more complex than doing it in a framework for C Sharp or other languages. Because we first need to begin a path. Then we need to say context, um, make, make a rectangle. And I just put some values in it. You can, I don't know, um, put in what you want. Um, just to note, the first two values are the coordinates where I want to draw it. First one is the X position and the second one is the Epsilon, uh, epsilon position. Oh, excuse me. And the other two are the width and the height. Ah, and um, I said Epsilon, sorry, I mean of course Y position. Um, all right. And then we're gonna um, set a fill style to, um, well, have a color. And I'm just gonna set this one. You can, of course, um, set everything you want. And then I'm gonna say fill that color inside the path and then close that. All right, so these are the steps to draw a simple rectangle. It's pretty much, but um, we're gonna we're gonna create a simpler version of it later. Um, a wrapper class or a wrapper utilities class to draw simple objects. Okay, so now we're gonna test that. I'm gonna go to my browser. There we go. Press on refresh. And there we go. There's our little rectangle. Okay, awesome. Um, <clears throat> next, we are um, introducing two methods. We're going to introduce two methods. Um, one method is the um, update simulation method. 
and this update simulation. Um, um, in the parameters, we have a delta time. You can call it dt or delta time. Um, yeah, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to call it delta time because it's easier to read. Then we have another function. And this function is called main loop. It's basically the, yeah, well, it's the main loop. And in this, we're going to um, start basically the infinite loop for the simulation. And I'm, and I'm going to do that with window request animation frame. I'm going to call the main loop function again. And yeah, to start that, I need to call the main loop. And then we're just like stuck in a infinite loop in there. You can, of course, add a Boolean to get out of it, but I think it's not necessary because you can just close the top and everything's done. Um, okay, so next, um, I'm gonna start calculating the delta time. For the delta time, we need, um, well, the current time and the last time, and we need to subtract these, uh, these and then we get the delta time. Um, we get the current time. Um, I just, I create the variables outside of the function. Um, just above the main loop, we can um, comment these things here out. I'm gonna create the variables I need right here. And the first thing is we need a current time. And I'll set that to zero. Yeah. Ah, and uh, I just set it to let. Okay, so the current time, we can get the current time by using performance dot now. And if we uh, lock that, um, well, we get the current time. So let's check that on the browser. And you see a black window. There we go. Open the settings. Oh, not the se sorry, not the settings. <laughs> I mean the tools developer tools and the console, then just refresh the um, application or the website or the site, I don't know how to call it, right? Um, and then you see the current time since the start of the, well, I call it now application. Um, yeah. What we're going to do now is um, we are uh, create or calculate the delta time. For that, I'm gonna add a new variable and that's called delta time. There we go. And we can calculate the delta time with the current time minus the last time. So you might ask, what is the last time? Well, last time is basically the current time, but after this step, after this calculation step. And what I'm going to do, I just set the last time here to the current time. <clears throat> so when this method here gets the current time, then the last time, you know, from the previous uh, run is, um, well, it's the, la it's the last um, time, basically, <laughs> um, in that last uh, function call. 
it has the time in the last function call and this one has the current time in this function call and so we can calculate the delta time um, but if you're gonna run that <coughs> now we run into problems oops I don't want to do that um, let's check that yeah you see last time is not defined so we need to uh, fix that and that's quite easy we just need to initialize a new or we need to add a new variable i'm gonna add it above oops above here and i call it let last time and this is performance.now and now we can calculate um, the delta time successfully just gonna print now the delta time and oops let's see how does it look uh, how does it look okay just wait a moment there we go um yeah don't forget to save and there we go we see the delta time just to note this delta time um well um is in milliseconds um but it's a convention to have it in seconds so we need to divide it by 1000 and that's pretty easy too um yeah pretty easy we just uh, add a uh, you know I don't know the word now <laughs> but you know what I mean you know these uh, not curling braces but these things <laughs> all right and um, when we do that and we go back to the, to the application and restart and now we have that in seconds awesome yep so um and that's almost everything in this episode we just need to call update simulation and that's pretty easy i'm gonna call it right after the delta time calculation so just update simulation and give it the delta time and i'm gonna move um this console log in here just to make sure everything works Okay, don't forget to save because I'm always forget that. Um, let's see if it works. It does work. Awesome. And yeah, that's a very important part. Um, I hope everything was clear um, about how to calculate that. Um, if you didn't understand it, just uh, replay the video. I'm sure you uh, get to know that. And if you still does not, uh, don't understand that, um, there are a lot of good resources about data time and a lot better methods to just calculate it like this. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, yeah, but I, I guess um, that's a pretty good start. And for a couple of episodes now, it, it's not getting more complex. But it will get a bit complex, more, more complex later on. All right. Um, that's for this episode. Thank you for watching and see you in the next uh, video. Bye.